Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the first exhibit hall of the third annual Low Carbon Smart Mobility Conference at QTRIC. I have Mike Bismeyer here today. Uh, Mike is Regional Sales Director uh, for Canada uh, at one of our gold sponsors, Proterra. Uh, Proterra vehicles have proven themselves through more than 20 million miles of service in communities across North America. They've operated at a lower cost. Uh, than 35 or 40 foot diesel hybrid or CNG transit vehicles. I'll let Mike take us through more on what's happening at Proterra. Uh, Mike, the floor is yours. Thanks, Sonny. Uh, no problem. I'll let you queue up the uh, the PowerPoint. If you could load that in there, that's perfect. And uh, well, welcome everyone to the uh, 2021 um, QTRIC uh, Low Carbon Smart Mobility Conference. Uh, albeit still different than we would hope, uh, we're inching towards normalcy. Uh, COVID has continued to uh, pose many challenges. Uh, and at this point, you know, we're unfortunately all know someone who's probably been adversely affected by the pandemic. So our thoughts go out to them. Uh, I do want to take a, a moment to thank all frontline workers, operators and, and staff, the agencies that have continued to keep transit moving uh, with all these uh, challenges for sure. And then anyone that's stepping up in their communities outside of transit as well. Uh, you know, uh, it's really appreciated. Kindness is cool. And, uh, you know, you have the power to change uh, the day for someone. So thanks for doing uh, everything you're doing. So uh, real quick before we start, a big congratulations out to Rome Transit, our friends uh, in Banff that uh, did their inaugural service run of their first battery electric bus this past Friday. So exciting times. It's exciting to hear the many zero emission strategies and plans for uh, all the participants, uh, both at the conference and in Canada going on right now. So I'm going to take you through some of the, the Proterra high level um, uh, bullet points and then we'll have some questions at the, at the end. You know, Proterra does have uh, a long history of delivering electric buses, over a thousand buses delivered now. Um, uh, 30 million uh, service kilometers. So, you know, we continue to develop the product based on that uh, 50 uh, megawatts of uh, installed infrastructure. And, you know, outside of the benefits of the greenhouse gas um, uh, carbon uh, savings, obviously there's uh, noise intrusion benefits, there's fuel cost savings, there's a maintenance uh, benefit. And then, you know, obviously assisting with uh, the geopolitical and environmental concerns and regional federal goals uh, that uh, everybody's rolling out. It's exciting times for, for battery electric bus uh, technology for sure. And we're excited to be part of that mission with you and uh, delivering uh, clean, quiet transportation for everyone continues to, to be our mission. Um, our newest iteration of product, the ZX-5, which uh, are the buses that uh, are in Edmonton currently and, and actually just uh, um, gone into service in Banff uh, is the newest iteration of our vehicle. There's a plethora of changes from our prior platform uh, throughout the vehicle, and I'm happy to get into that, into that with someone on a one-on-one. -on -one. We, we definitely can uh, follow up after. But we continue to develop the technology, reimagine the vehicle. Um, there's uh, some more uh, enhancements that are already set for late 2021 and 22 for this vehicle, both the interior and some of our subcomponent uh, partnerships. So it's exciting times. Uh, the ZX-5 does have the uh, most available onboard energy of any 40 foot vehicle, uh, transit vehicle. Uh, and the vehicles, you know, I took a, a quick look with our engineers this morning. We did a quick random scan of uh, 10 vehicles from the Edmonton fleet this morning uh, through the telematics. And those buses in the last two weeks uh, from a random sampling are averaging uh, 1.165 uh, kilowatt hours per kilometer. So great efficiency they're seeing from, from that model of vehicle. So we're excited with the ZX-5. Uh, and again, happy to talk more uh, uh, to you guys about that outside of, of this. Um, and then, you know, Proterra has announced a lot of partnerships lately. Um, our best-in-class battery technology continues to be adopted by uh, many other OEMs and partnerships. So uh, we've electrified the um, Thomas School Bus, the Van Gogh Coach, a partnership with Freightliner. Um, you know, Bus Tech in Australia recently announced uh, with Komatsu from the excavator front. And then the Optimal product, which will be the first purpose-built uh, low-floor shuttle bus, a battery electric, uh, and that's uh, slated to be available uh, for order taking sort of Q4 this year with delivery starting in 2022. Um, and I know I've introduced a lot of you to the Optimal folks directly. That product will be handled by um, the dealer network in Canada. So uh, on the East Coast through the folks at City View and on the West Coast dynamic. But uh, again, happy to provide more information there. So it's exciting times as we continue to announce partnerships. And it's actually a really exciting day for Proterra. Um, we're, uh, we're not far off, but we're set to ring the bell uh, on the NASDAQ today at 4, 4 o'clock uh, Eastern. So it's a big day for us. We were listed as a public company yesterday. Um, so our team is uh, pretty excited about that, and there's, uh, uh, we'll be uh, logging into that later today. So uh, continue to um, advance uh, and, and provide uh, electrification for everyone, and our partnerships continue to grow. I uh, want to talk a bit about route modeling. I know Kutrick did a, a great um, uh, informative uh, presentation already on route modeling, but we too all do offer route modeling to to our customers. And, uh, you know, I know there's been some talk in the past of the OEMs and 
um, providing uh, route modeling through the OEM. But uh, as a manufacturer of electric buses, we you know we have over uh, 10 years and, and 20 million miles of, of service and understand the physics-based model uh, of our product. And uh, a lot of times we work with agencies and we're able to significantly reduce um, their upfront costs uh, and, and some of the costing that they've had estimates from uh, some third party um, surveys as well. Uh, you know, we, we, if you're willing to do some strategic, um, you know, route planning where vehicles can be moved around with excess uh, onboard energy within the fleet, et cetera. So happy to talk about that. Uh, and my, one of my colleagues will be on for some Q&A at the end here, uh, Alan weston Scow, who's uh, involved heavily with our uh, energy management team. Um, uh, but wanted to talk a bit about it. It's something that we do offer to our, our uh, customers as well. And from the battery technology standpoint, I uh, talked a bit about our <clears throat> partnerships and those continue. We continue to get uh, a lot of um, interest in our best in class batteries. We, we do build and design our own batteries. Uh, safety is key. Um, we believe we're a technology leader in that. Um, so we recently opened our newest production manufacturing facility uh, in our LA uh, bus plant, which has been really exciting. It's expanded our ability to do that. We continue to invest in R&D, uh, supply chain securement and partnerships for, for the future based on um, sort of where we are already. So it's uh, exciting times. We partner with tier one um, cell manufacturers and uh, we actually recently partnered with uh, also with Redwoods Materials, who's the largest lithium ion um, battery recycler. So uh, that's exciting. The Patera battery pack is uh, is predominantly recyclable and we can talk more about that uh, uh, as well. So uh, that, that's exciting. And, and again, I'm happy to take anyone on a tour. If uh, anybody ever wants to come down and visit, uh, please do reach out to me. Happy to uh, meet you at one of our factories and give you the tour of what the, the battery production looks like and the, and the bus production for that matter, if you haven't been in it. And um, a little bit about the battery safety. Uh, Proterra continues uh, to, to lead sort of in design of batteries and battery safety. Um, you know, one of the things we build into our battery packs is the uh, passive um, uh, propagation resistance, which allows uh, single cell thermal events to be contained um, it also uh, decreases uh, what may need to be replaced in a battery. And Proterra, we believe, you know, in, in very stringent third-party um, uh, testing, our internal reliability requirements have been developed using um, standards uh, that meet or exceed SAE, ISO, and IEC standards in the industry. So we would recommend that if, as you move into procurements of uh, battery electric buses, that you do definitely include uh, battery safety as part of your spec. And again, uh, happy to provide uh, share some information there uh, for for those folks that are sort of going down that path. And in terms of batteries, you know this 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 slide gets a lot of attention from a lot of people, but um, you know a very strong statement that Proterra batteries can provide more energy uh, at the end of twelve years than some OEMs do from day one or other providers of batteries. And um, what that talks about is the onboard energy. So the nameplate on our extended range bus six seventy five six hundred seventy five kilowatts of available energy. Uh, we make 90% of that available um, to the customer up front, so 607 kilowatts. And with our extended battery warranty, which warrants 72% of that will still be usable at the end of the 12 years, um, that equates to 486 kilowatts of um, energy still available at year 12. So, um, you know, that's, that's inherently important when you start to talk about battery midlife overhauls and changing of batteries and, and degradation. So we really believe in our product and, I like to show that slide because it definitely gets a lot of attention when we when we sort of throw that out there. So it's something to think about for sure with uh, definitely with our extended range vehicles, the amount of onboard energy that um, you won't have to worry about for uh, a long time in terms of the operational standpoint. And then a little bit about our chargers and um, I apologize we're flipping through some of these quick, but I know we want to leave some some information time at the at the end for Q&A. But uh, <clears throat> we introduced a, a new lineup of chargers uh, sort of mid to late last year. Um, really exciting, uh, our next iteration of chargers as well from 75 kilowatts all the way up to the 1.5 megawatt, um, scalable for all different fleets, for all types of vehicles, uh, even, even um, you know, outside of transit, they're uh, 1772 compatible and 3105, of course, for overhead perspective. The 1.5 megawatt charger, we've had a ton of interest in. We've got several projects that are vetting that now. Um, it's a game changer, we believe, in terms of sort of footprint uh, from an installation standpoint, uh, it can charge up to 40 dispensers um, with that single install of that 1.5 megawatt uh, sort of cabinet style um, charger. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be um, configured with all 40 up front. It's, it's scalable. So you can, uh, you know, sort of just start with a few modules for however many buses you might have on your initial inception. 
That being said, a lot of agencies are, are thinking beyond the pilot now as a start. So how do we scale uh, a little quicker? And this sort of alleviates some of that having to uh, do more construction very early on in the initial stages or a phase two of what you might be rolling out in vehicles. And we can also work with you to see where that makes sense from an economic standpoint if you're considering a few chargers as well. And this next slide sort of gives you an idea of what that looks like in the field. So on the left-hand side, you see the 1.5 megawatt charger. Uh, in the middle is one of the dispensers and then the, the plug-in 1772 compatible charger on the right. But you know, just if you're even just considering five to six chargers with multi-dispensers, you can see you know, that they would almost take up the exact same footprint as this um, 1.5 megawatt that can inherently uh, or can eventually uh, uh, charge up to 40 uh, dispensers. So definitely uh, something to consider when you're sort of uh, doing that initial inception. We've worked with utilities for a long time already in terms of providing turnkey and full um, systems and having utilities purchase our chargers and uh, and sort of um, charge them back to the customers so that they own the infrastructure piece and happy to have those conversations with anyone as well. And Proterra has offered financing from day one as well for both the buses, the chargers and full uh, turnkey. So if there's a gap in funding or you're not quite there, we can we can look at uh, you know, innovative ways to, to get you over the hump to continue that uh, fleet electrification as well. This next uh, <clears throat> slide really just shows the uh, 1.5 megawatt charger at one of our factories where we uh, commission buses that come off the line and do some of the overhead pantograph testing, uh, as well as charge our demo fleet uh, and some of the other buses that uh, might be coming by our facility. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you see um, uh, the Edmonton Transit buses and they're in depot overhead uh, charging strategy. So with pantographs in the depot, they've got uh, uh, four lanes with um, four chargers deep each uh, that are powered by 150 kilowatt chargers uh, in, a, in a different room. Um, and I forgot to mention that with our 1.5 megawatt charger, like all our chargers, the dispenser can be located up to 500 feet away. So it gives you a lot of options for sort of installing and footprint and sort of future proofing where, where your infrastructure might go. And obviously there's, you know, we've heard from some of the presentations earlier that the bus is the easy part and, and you know, where a lot of the heavy conversations go is with the infrastructure and we're happy to help uh, with those as well and coach you through it and share material and collaboration has been a big theme on the sessions early this morning and we're always happy to collaborate to uh, bring our uh, internal champions and experts uh, onto the calls as well. Uh, and then the last slide uh, before we jump into some questions I wanted to talk a little bit about workforce development. It's another uh, key conversation that goes on um, throughout the industry and as uh, there's more sort of ZEB committees and different people talking about it but you know, Proterra has always sort of led in this as well. Our experts have helped with the uh, APTA committees, uh, we develop courses for the transit training center uh, on battery electric bus familiarization, uh, high voltage training uh, seminars um, and, and different uh, conferences and transit organizations. We've uh, helped with that as well. As a matter of fact, we did a, um, uh, I know Karen Cameron from Opta was on one of the panels earlier today. We did a webinar early this year for battery electric bus familiarization and we're doing a actual workforce development uh, webinar coming up in June here, June 23rd, I believe, that's actually open to non-OPTA uh, members for a small fee as well. So if it's something you're interested in, just ping me and I'm happy to send you the link. Uh, and it talks about readying your, your workforce for the introduction of battery electric buses and some of the things to get ready for them from a tooling perspective and those sorts of things. So. Uh, and then the last thing I would just say that, you know, a Proterra rollout, typically our standard training, we there's about 92 hours of upfront training that's included in a standard purchase, whether that's one bus or eight buses on your first one. And then we definitely can work with you to continually, um, you know, upskill your, your, your team and continue to have refresher training throughout the, the journey for sure. So uh, that's it for me, Samuel, at this point. Happy to um, take some questions. I think you're going to bring Alan on from our team as well, Alan Westensko, and uh, happy to try and help with any questions anyone might have. I know uh, we had a very short window here, and uh, we were told to talk fast, so I apologize. Uh, I would lastly say, as everyone knows, I'm very passionate about uh, random acts of kindness in your community, so I implore you all to go out and do something for someone else this week and make someone's day uh, uh, by committing a random act of kindness, and uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks a lot, Mike, uh, and uh, welcome Welcome on screen, Alan. Uh, well, a uh, great ending note. Uh, a, a key component uh, on bus purchase orders these days, especially the operations and uh, you know training component. Uh, basically, yeah, helping out transit agencies uh, move on to these new technologies without uh, too many bugs uh, in maintaining these buses. Uh, we do have a few questions here. Um, I'll dive right in. Um, first of all. Uh, you know, do your bus battery and charging platforms uh, merge well with B2G applications? 
are they are they compatible with B2G applications? Sure, Alan, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, you bet. So uh, one of the things that's great about our battery, uh, the way it's designed and the warranty is there's a throughput component. So uh, you're able to use that energy however you want. If you want to use it just for having energy come in and then use it on your vehicle, that's great. If you want to use it for um, putting it back out on the grid, that's great as well. We are deploying, uh, as, as Mike mentioned, we are deploying uh, other vehicles uh, in the US with school buses, for example, that use Proterra batteries, the same battery, but putting on another vehicle. And uh, Thomas built school buses, they, they, they selected our batteries. And those vehicles right now are actively charging vehicle to the grid. So we know the battery works, it's the same thing. Uh, and if that's something that someone's interested in, uh, we're happy to make sure that the hardware is on the buses as well to make that work. But again, I think one of the key things to consider in there is the battery designed to be able to do that. And how does that impact your warranty for Proterra? It doesn't matter. We've designed it and set up uh, from a competitive uh, standpoint to make that work either way. Uh, thanks a lot, Alan. Um, yeah, uh, to jump off a bit onto, you know, uh, transit agencies as planning needs, uh, well, based on your expertise, uh, should transit agencies uh, choose the best battery capacity and what kind of what kind of uh, battery capacity and charging strategy should transit agencies choose right and uh, how do you, how do you factor in battery degradation in rollout planning uh, for transit agencies uh, if you can yeah uh, shed some insight on that um, uh, you are on mute mike um, Sorry about that. Um, hopefully I'm back, but I'll start on that one. I think, uh, you know, we would work with any agency as any of the OEMs would be to make sure we, we have the right fit of onboard energy based on some sort of feasibility or, or route analysis, which we, as I said, we do. Uh, definitely, um, you know, there's multiple energy platforms available. Um, understanding what is the best to sort of have that enough energy to satisfy the most amount of routes. Um, you know, and Alan, I don't know if you've got anything else to add there from, from that standpoint, from the modeling perspective. Yeah. I I think we think it's a really important question and we think that um, it, it's important to consider this because uh, the information is there and the modeling is, is available now. So as Mike mentioned, what we're able to do with our customers, we can do this for any customer that wants it. We can actually take the data that you have uh, based on your GPS of your existing uh, fossil fuel fleet. And we can look at when each of those vehicles leaves and come back, comes back in the day and using our physics-based model, we can identify what the actual efficiency is going to be for each of those vehicles. It's different for every one of your vehicles in your fleet because we're all driving different duty cycles. That tells us how much energy that bus is going to require to be able to make a route on that given day, if on route charging is required or not, or what the optimal amount of energy storage is on the bus. You might want 450 kilowatt hours or 675. We take all of that on the entire fleet and then we can determine what the right charging strategy is. Because what we're looking at is all of the buses charging together, not just one. And that allows us to be able to avoid peak demands and to spread out and get increased utilization of chargers. So uh, the answer is it's really important to think that through. And we have the tool set to be able to help our customers think that through. And it's just energy math, really. Uh, thanks a lot, Alan. Uh, well, since we're running out of time, one last quick fire question, uh, you know, just to ensure some takeaways here. Uh, for all, all of our audiences here. Uh, how do you think can Proterra help us reach uh, the goal of 5,000 ZEVs in Canada? Uh, how can we get there, Mike, Ali? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're, we're you know, I mean, we've got two factories, we're, we're ramped up. We've got, uh, you know, we've got a, a lot of interest. Obviously there's a huge mandate in the US as well. So uh, it's exciting times for battery electric. I mean, we're poised to, to get, take it to the next level with going public. Uh, you know, we have the ability to expand if we need to, but we do have two full um, production facilities. We don't see any issue with supplying the buses. I think it's a matter of uh, having and helping our agencies get over the hump and, and sort of, uh, finalize and capture that funding they need to to start to place those orders. I think that's really still the goal. I know there's a lot of announcements out there about the funding, but I don't think there's a lot of uh, information yet on the tools of how they're going to access it or exactly how quickly they can access it at this point. Uh, thank you, Mike. Um, and yeah, so I I'm sure uh, we have more questions around. Um, since we're running out of time, I'd encourage our audience members to maybe join us at the networking sessions as well, where we, you can you know, hopefully bring in more questions and have a chat with Mike and Alan uh, if you're around. Uh, but for the time being, uh, thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, and th thanks a lot, Alan. It's been a pleasure having you. Uh, more panels on the go uh, in the next few hours as well. Uh, 
So yeah, audience members, uh, you can stick around. Thanks, uh, lots of interesting stuff. And I would say anybody can reach out to us directly. We're happy to answer any questions. We appreciate it. And thank you to Qtrick as well.